In this video, I'm going to be servicing the wheel bearings on my utility trailer. For this, I got some shop towels, obviously some grease, a whole lot of gloves, a couple of wrenches, a hammer, and a pipe wrench. Now I use the pipe wrench to remove the grease or dust caps from each side of the wheel. And I'm only going to show the one wheel in this video. So with a bit of a, a twist and a pull motion, the dust cap should come off without a great deal of difficulty. Once the dust caps off, I'm going to remove the tire from the trailer. So not a lot of mystery here. There's five uh, wheel lug nuts and they all need to be loosened prior to jacking up the trailer and removing the wheel from the trailer. Now this should be one of my last videos for a long time since I'm going to be moving to Ontario, which is why I'm doing this servicing now. Once I've got all the lug nuts loosened, I'm going to jack up the trailer, throw an axle stand under the axle, and lower the trailer onto the axle stand. Now that it's secure with the axle stand, I will remove the five lug nuts by hand and then remove the tire from the trailer. Once the tire's off, you're gonna be able to see the cotter pin or split pin, and you're gonna to need to straighten that out. And it's this cotter pin that secures your castle nut in place and keeps the hub on the axle. Now it is a good idea to replace things like the cotter pin and some of your washers. In this case, I'm just greasing it up and reusing the old parts. However, it may not be advisable in all situations. Once the cotter pin straightened out, you should be able to remove it from the spindle with a pair of needle nose pliers or vice grips. Now to remove the castle nut, I, uh, I found it beneficial just to grip it with some paper towel because it was pretty slimy. If you had a large adjustable wrench, that would also work to uh, get it spinning. Once it's free, you should be able to move it by hand without a great deal of effort. And although I'm not going to show it, I do wipe all these parts down pretty thoroughly with some paper towel. Now that the castle nut is being removed, you can remove the outer bearing. You can see that it's pretty greasy there, but uh, that the grease is all gone from the standard red to a dark black dirty grease and now you'll be able to remove the hub from the spindle. Now you can't really see it on this one because it's so dirty on the back however there is a outer bearing as well as an oil seal that has to come out. Before I remove the inner bearing I'm going to give the spindle a good wipe down and I will be greasing that up later. Now to remove the inner bearing I just found a hammer that is size so that it won't fit through the bearing so it's something rubber and it'll pop the bearing out the back side and this will knock the oil seal out the back as well uh, along with the bearing so it really depends on your bearing size what you can use to pop it out the back i found that rubber hammer worked well as you can see also very dirty I didn't videotape me wiping down the hub, but uh, there's the end result. Nice and clean. And I just used paper towel to wipe it out, sprayed it with some uh, degreaser, and then gave it another good wipe out. So I was waiting for it to all dry before I grease it up. And I filmed this on the other wheel in the daytime just to get a better visual on the bearing. Uh, when you're greasing the bearings up after they've been wiped down with paper towel or whatever you got, you want to sort of grind the grease into the bearing and really force the grease between the uh, cup and cone, grease shield, and through the rollers. So there's, you'll see the gap in your bearing. You see that I'm forcing the grease into that gap. I want to get it in all the way around. And then once I do the other side, you'll notice that it starts pushing the grease back out in the opposite side. And that way you know the bearing's being uh, filled properly with grease. The other option, you can see me doing it here after I've sort of filled it uh, with the first method, is just to push it in with your thumb. And once you've forced the grease in, I don't think it's really necessary to work on the roller bearings on the outside. 
uh, since you will probably get them adequately greasy as you're forcing the oil into the cup and cone assemblies. And prior to installing the inner bearing and oil seal, I do add a bunch of grease to the oil seal. And in addition to this, I also add it to the bearing surface uh, within the hub assembly as well. So the bearing needs to go in the same way it came out. In this case, it's taper side in. And then the oil seal just pops back in place. And just to make sure that it goes in straight, I'm using sort of a block of wood and hammer and make sure it's seated in there properly. And prior to installing the hub assembly, I'm going to grease the straight spindle to ensure that all the bearing surfaces are well greased. And prior to mounting the hub assembly back on the spindle, I will grease the mounting location for the outer bearing. Once that's complete, I'll mount the hub assembly back on the spindle. And I'll do the outer bearing in quick time here. So you can see I'm forcing the grease into the cup and cone and grease shield and rollers and then forcing it in further sort of just with the, the thumb there uh, to ensure that that bearing is fully greased up. And uh, like I said previously, gets enough grease on the, the bearings on the outside surface that you don't really need to add additional grease to the exterior of the bearing. Once the outer bearing is fully greased, I'm just going to reinstall it into the hub assembly with the taper side in. Once the outer bearing is installed, simply reattach the castle nut, insert the cotter pin, and bend the cotter pin back across the spindle. Some trailers may have an additional washer between the castle nut and the outer bearing. And prior to installing the grease slash dust cup, I'm going to apply a small amount of grease to ensure that if any dust uh, tries to penetrate in there, it will get stuck in the grease. I'm going to bang it on by hand and also uh, give it a few taps with the hammer as well. Once everything's on, give it a good wipe down with the paper towel so that you don't have grease uh, unnecessarily on the outside of the hub, which is just ultimately going to collect more dust and then reinstall the wheel. And this is very much the opposite of the removal. I'm just gonna snug the lug nuts up prior to removing the axle stand and lowering the trailer. And once the trailer is lowered, it'll be significantly easier to tighten the lug nuts. And when tightening the lug nuts on the wheel, you should ensure that you're working a crisscross pattern. Overall, this job does not take very much time. However, it is fairly greasy and you are going to want to have plenty of gloves on hand to do this. Thanks for checking out my video and don't forget to like and subscribe.